All day park hopping is back in Walt Disney World. Let's go ride the best rides in all four parks. Hey there, ma'am fam. After years of restrictions, all day park hopping is finally back in Walt Disney World. So to celebrate, I wrote a list of 10 of the best and most popular attractions across all four parks, and we are gonna do them all today. Along the way, I'll share some of my park hopping tips and tricks, little GD Plus tips and tricks. It's gonna be so much fun. We've got a lot to do. Let's get to it. Okay, now let's go. Starting the day off at Epcot, where I've got two attractions on my list and actually two Lightning Lanes books. So we are ready to go. First stop, we're headed to World Discovery to save the galaxy. Now, I know I said I'd give out some Genie Plus tips and tricks, which I absolutely will. I'll kind of explain my strategy and things throughout the day today. However, if you want the full Genie Plus breakdown, how exactly to use it, where to prioritize it at every park, best tips and tricks, the full enchilada of Genie Plus. We just did a Genie Plus guide. Check that one out for sure before you come. Parting things off with a banger at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This is the newest attraction here at Epcot and it is such a fun roller coaster. First of its kind of Omni Coaster that spins you 360 degrees to look at different things as you go on an adventure with all of your favorite Guardians to save the galaxy. It has a 42 inch height requirement and there's only two ways to ride this attraction. It's either a virtual queue or a fancy ride. There is no standby line. But let's, before we get in there, talk about virtual queues real quick because they have changed slightly. So here's your virtual queue 101. Virtual queues are the only free way to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind here as well as Tron Light Cycle Run over at Magic Kingdom. To join the virtual queue you can join it at either 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. A little asterisk right there because if you are a DVC or deluxe resort guest and it's extended hours at one of these specific parks they do an extra drop at 6 p.m. but that one we're not really talking about that one that one has not been impacted but the earlier one has. Previously, you had to have a park reservation to join the 7 a.m. queue for whichever park you wanted. So you had to have an Epcot reservation for Guardians, you had to have a Magic Kingdom reservation for Tron. However, along with removing park hopping restrictions, they also removed park reservations for date-based tickets. The majority of guests have date-based tickets. I'm talking like a one, two, three, four, five, whatever your like day ticket is, that's what I mean by date-based tickets. You no longer have to make park reservations for each day of your vacation. Annual pass holders, you have to sometimes, when you go to make a park reservation, there is something now called a good to go day and it'll be circled with green. You don't have to have them that days, but any other days, annual pass holders, you still have to have a park reservation. So now, since most people no longer have to make park reservations, anyone can join one of the virtual queues at 7 a.m. For the 1 p.m. virtual queue, you do still have to be in that park and have scanned in your admission to get a virtual queue for either, again, Tron or Guardians. The Disney World website says that you can hold one at a time, so you cannot have someone book Tron at 7 a.m. for your group and someone else book Guardians at 7 a.m. for your group. However, the way I'm reading that, you could book Guardians, and if you got through the attraction early enough, if you got an early enough group and then hopped over to Magic Kingdom by 1 p.m., you could get Tron then. If you're interested in joining the virtual queue, you need to be on it and ready right at the time of the drop. So make sure that you've got your group all linked up. You can actually check that an hour prior to the drop. Make sure everybody that wants to ride is all selected. Then use a world clock on another device to count down and at 6.59.59, refresh that screen. Just click through, click join, and hopefully it will give you a boarding group number. It will then throughout the day count you down. There are signs around the parks that tell you which groups they're boarding. You can also check in the app to see what group they're loading. Then when it's your turn, they'll send you a push notification in the app, or you can go check that screen again, and you will have a limited amount of time to return to the attraction. It's usually an hour, but it might vary. Make sure you're on time, especially over at Tron, because they're pretty strict and don't have that much of a grace period on the back end, but then you just tap in with the cast members and you're ready to ride. A couple final thoughts to keep in mind with a virtual queue is you have no control over what boarding group you're gonna get and thus no control over what time you will be called back. So it can be a little bit harder for planning, which is why I went ahead and did a lightning lane instead of a virtual queue. Also note, virtual queue doesn't mean expedited. You could still wait a while. I've never waited less than like 45 minutes or an hour to get on Tron. So just keep that in mind too. But on this attraction specifically, I do like the virtual queue because the queue is actually very fun. So if you haven't done it before, consider doing a virtual queue or you can do both. You can have both a virtual queue and a fancy ride lightning lane. Thank you. 
Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind has a 42-42 inch height requirement. And part of the reason it's so fun and people love it is because you never know what song you're gonna get. There are six different songs. Popular ones include September and Everybody Wants to Rule the World. I'm really hoping for some conga or some disco inferno. I haven't had either of those in a while and, and I just feel like dancing, you know? One ride down, nine to go. What a great attraction that is. Perfect way to kick it off. I got Everybody Wants to Rule the World, which is not my fave. I like something a little vibier, but I know people love that one. I am headed into World Showcase for our second and final Epcot attraction. Any guesses which country I'm going to? We'll be there in just a moment. Somehow, traveling through video is even faster than traveling around the world when you're in World Showcase. Do you know it's 1.2 miles from Mexico to Canada if you go all the way around? So basically what I'm trying to say is eating and drinking around the world is also exercising and therefore healthy. You're welcome. Bonjour, ma'am, fam. If you knew we were going to France, you are correct. We are going to do Remy's Ratatouille adventure. This is the first attraction I booked on Genie Plus today right at 7 a.m. And I got a return time of 11.50 to 12.50, which is honestly perfect. One of my Genie Plus tips is to not use Genie Plus if you're rope dropping for the first like two-ish hours of the park being open. Because if you're rope dropping, a lot of attractions are gonna have low lines anyway. So don't waste Genie Plus when there's already low lines and start booking things and stacking things for later. So if you do get an earlier time, make sure to use that modify feature to push it back a little bit. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is a family ride, meaning no high requirement. It is a 3D attraction that's part simulator, part practical set that's gonna shrink you down to the size of a rat and put you through some iconic scenes of Ratatouille. It is super, super cute. I really enjoy this attraction, but warning, if you get motion sick, this one does it to some people because again, 3D and screens. This is a great one to use a lightning lane on because it's very popular, usually has quite a long line. It's 55 minutes right now, which is actually low for this attraction. It's usually well over an hour. And additionally, it's a one that runs out very quickly. So I highly recommend making this probably the first lightning lane you're gonna book in a day. Maybe the second if you're trying to do something like hop to Hollywood Studios and trying to get slinky, but it's usually gone within the first hour of the park being open. Just a cute, cute, cute attraction. And now saying au revoir to the France Pavilion as well as Epcot, we are headed now to Hollywood. Welcome to the mini game of this episode. Unfortunately right now, the Skyliner is down for refurbishment, which means from here, the best way to get to Hollywood Studios is the boat. But as you can see, that boat is pulling away. And I walked up right as they said it was about to take off. And the cast member said, it'll be another one will be around in about 15 minutes. Or if you walk fast enough, you can pick it up at the Yacht Club. Challenge accepted. I think it's going to boardwalk first, which means I have a little more time than I thought to walk. Still keeping pace. Yeah, it's going to boardwalk. And I'm sorry for this surely choppy footage. I cannot hold my hand very steady at this brisk speed. Okay, I feel confident in my ability to make the boat now because it's not even here yet. 
and I'm walking onto the dock. But it seems like a good time to talk about Disney transportation. Anyone, whether you're a resort guest or not, can use Disney transportation for free. And there's a way to get from any park to any other park using Disney transportation. From Magic Kingdom, you can take the monorail to Epcot or the bus to Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom. From Epcot, you can take the monorail to Magic Kingdom, the boat to Hollywood Studios, the Skyliner when it's running to Hollywood Studios. Technically, you can walk to Hollywood Studios. It'd be about a 30 minute walk and a bus to Animal Kingdom. From Hollywood Studios, let's do that in reverse, boat or Skyliner to Epcot, bus to Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom, and from Animal Kingdom, you can take a bus to anywhere. Now, what's interesting about the bus service is that previously, when there was a park hopper restriction and you couldn't park hop till 2 p.m., the in-between park buses didn't start running until 1.30, but now they're running all day long. And I find Disney transportation to be fun. It's not always the fastest thing, so make sure you schedule enough time to get between parks. I would say, like, at least 45 minutes to get between parks, maybe more, to just err on the side of caution. But, uh... It's like a little fun bonus adventure in your day if you do choose to use it, especially I think the monorail and the Skyliner. One thing to know though, there is not a direct bus from any of the parks to Disney Springs. If you wanna to go to Disney Springs using Disney transportation, you have to go to a hotel and then take their bus. Honestly, I don't usually recommend this because it can be a huge time suck. Maybe if you're at Magic Kingdom and you wanna to walk to Contemporary or if you're here at Epcot and you wanna to walk to Yadder Beach, but normally do not recommend you also will not find any transportation between hotels. So like if you're staying at Grand Floridian and wanna come over to the beach club for lunch, there's no bus that's gonna get you in between those. What I would recommend if you don't have a car at that point is to use some kind of rideshare service like Uber or Lyft, or the best choice, but also most expensive is minivans, which are special cars operated through the Lyft app, but they have Disney cast members as the drivers. So they're very knowledgeable, they're very kind, they're always gonna have car seats. Also, if you take a minivan to Magic Kingdom, they're gonna drop you off right at the front of the park where the buses are, as opposed to the transportation and ticket center, which is where regular Uber or Lyft will drop you off. Again, minivans are very, very expensive, often like four or five times the amount of just getting a regular lift, but for convenience, they can be quite nice. made it to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Took a little less than 15 minutes to get here from the Yacht Club. So it'd be about 20-ish minutes from Epcot. And on the boat ride, I did a little fiddle faddling to lock in my next attraction at the time I wanted it. Fiddle faddling is one of my favorite Genie Plus tips. It's when you use the modify screen, refresh it over and over again, and hopefully something more desirable, maybe an attraction that says it was previously out of lightning lanes or a better time, usually shows back up if you try for a few minutes. I'll talk more about fiddle faddling and exactly what I was doing when we're going to those attractions, but for now I gotta scurry into the park because I got a date with the force. Made it inside the park. It is quite a busy day. The turnstile lines were quite long despite park hopping being available at any time. So just as always, patient pants for when you're coming in. Anyway, I am headed to my second fancy ride of the day. I'm sure you guessed that, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Couple quick things about fancy rides while we're walking over there. Uh, Disney calls them individual lightning lanes. Originally they called them individual lightning lane a la carte selection. That's too many words, so I say fancy ride. There are five fancy rides at Walt Disney World. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, Avatar Flight of Passage, and two at Magic Kingdom Tron Light Cycle Run and Seven Doors Mine Train. These are separate from Genie Plus. You don't have to purchase Genie Plus to buy these and vice versa, but you're gonna pay per person per ride to skip the line. The price is gonna vary by attraction as well as by day. Busier days are gonna be more expensive than not busier days. Today, Guardians of the Galaxy was $15 and Rise of the Resistance was 22 plus tax. I don't know why they don't include tax, but what are you gonna do? Each person can only book two fancy rides per day. Even if you were willing to pay for all five of them, you can only book 
two. Obviously, I chose Rise and Guardians because I think of the five, all being very popular attractions, I think those are the most popular of those five. Now, if you are a Walt Disney World Resort guest, you can purchase your fancy rides starting at 7 a.m. If you're not a Walt Disney World Resort guest, you can purchase them at the time that park opens, which for both of those parks was 9 a.m. So I booked Guardians first, knowing when I had Remy booked and I booked it around then. Then I went to book Rise and there was only like really late times for Rise left. So I rolled the dice because I knew I was not going to be in Hollywood Studios that late. And I didn't book it right then because sometimes more times open up and I waited like three minutes, five minutes, and I looked again and a bunch more times had opened up. So then I was able to pick a more convenient time with when I knew I would be places. That is something you can try. I would not recommend doing that if it's really, really busy, like holiday season, summer. I would not try doing that. Also, if you've never been on Rise, if riding Rise is like of the utmost importance to you, I would buy it as soon as you're able to to make sure you lock it in. But sometimes, if you look back a few minutes later, more times will open up. So take that with a cautionary uh, note of a tip. Thank you. Rise of the Resistance, in my opinion, is the best attraction in Walt Disney World. It has a 44 zero inch height requirement. And it is multiple ride systems, multiple sets, larger than life practical sets, trackless vehicles, and you're thrown into a battle between the First Order and the Resistance. It's unbelievable. It does go down a lot because it's a very complex attraction and trackless rides tend to go down for technical difficulties more than other rides anyway, but it is so worth it. Authority of the First Order, Resistance Scum. I have a bad feeling about this. I've got a bad feeling about this. She was very kind. And she just, uh, she was like, how many for interrogation? I said one. She's like, no one loves you. You have no friends or family. <laughs> I'm trying to finish this personally. I see no evidence. Now. Of the resistance base is secure. The last thing I'll say about fancy rides is unlike Genie Plus attractions, you're actually going to select a time that you'd like to ride it. And once you select it, you are locked in. There's no modifying it, there's no canceling it. So, especially if you're trying to park hop and plan accordingly, make sure you know when you're going to be in that park and able to ride that attraction because you're locked in once you book it. Headed down Sunset Boulevard for attraction two here, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Now this was the second attraction I booked today at 11 a.m. doing a little bit of stacking, which I go over in a lot of detail in that Genie Plus guide. But when I booked this at 11 a.m., it was much later in the day and then I fiddle faddled to get it to an earlier time so that I could do it right or after rise or as close as possible after rise. One of the beauties of stacking is it allows people like me who are not super early birds to still maximize a lot of time in the parks because you can kind of create a list of attractions that you're already geared up for. If you're an early riser or if you're an early riser at Disney only like I know a lot of people are, get up rope drop. We're doing a rope drop series too, just in an Animal Kingdom one and you can accomplish a lot in those first few hours of the park when they're not super busy. But if you're like me and you like sleeping in and it's your vacation, you don't wanna be in the parks at 7 a.m., yes, you have to get up early to book the lightning lanes, but it tends, in my opinion, to be a much more luxuriating experience once you're in the park. Tower of Terror has a 40, 40 inch high requirement and it is a free fall style attraction where you're headed into the Hollywood Tower Hotel where something mysterious happened on Halloween night, 1939. And you're about to visit another dimension. Thank you.
This is a very good attraction to use Lightning Lane on because it's incredibly popular, especially Rock and Roller Coaster is down for a long planned refurbishment. And so that just means other popular rides are gonna get even longer lines because Rock and Roller Coaster isn't taking anybody. This, as you may recognize, is a maintenance service elevator. Your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the elevator. Tear, a delight as always. It's kind of spitting now. I think it was raining harder. It looked rain like it was raining harder when I was on the ride and now it's kind of like spittling a little bit. But uh, we gotta keep trekking. Our next lighting lane is now and we still have two more parks to do. So into the rain. Great, my favorite. Okay, y'all, first of all, do as I say, not as I do. Always bring rain gear when you're going to Walt Disney World. It will rain when it says it's not going to. It won't rain when it's like, just bring rain gear. Don't do this. Second of all, my heart is filled with so much joy because I just watched an adult son and his mom dancing outside of the theater to the music, like in their ponchos, and it was so sweet. Thank you. Whew. Made it into our next attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It started picking up as I was walking over here, so I had to dash a little bit. But anyway, that uh, mother and son made my day because they were just so sweet and not letting the rain bother them. and. Enjoying the moment with the people they're with, which is what a lot of Disney is about. But I think people sometimes forget that because a lot of people make it about rides and everything, which is great too. Hello, sure. Uh, but don't forget to enjoy the company of your loved ones. Anyway, I just tapped in for my lightning lane at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This was the third Genie Plus lightning lane I booked today. So I booked Remy's Ratatouille Adventure at 7 a.m. Then I was able to book Tower of Terror at 11 and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at one. And then when I was on my boat ride from Hollywood Studios, I fiddle faddled and I was able to move it from like a seven something time and then into the five o'clock hour and then up to 2.40, which was right after Tower of Terror and perfect. So always make sure you book a lightning lane as soon as possible. As soon as you're able to look at that little bar on the top of your tip board, book them as soon as possible and then modify and fiddle faddle to try and uh, move it to where you want it to be if you don't get it at first. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is such a cute attraction. I love it so much. It is a trackless dark ride with projection mapping technology. There's no height requirement, but it's still really thrilling. There's tons of little details and hidden Mickeys and nods to animators and Imagineers. And it's just, I think this is such a cute attraction, an amazing pre-show, definitely a must do for me. And as many rides in this park, very, very popular, a great use of a lightning lane. All right, it's actually time to book my next lightning lane and I'm headed to Animal Kingdom next. And I wasn't actually gonna use Genie Plus there because I was hoping that I wanna do Expedition Everest, which has a 70 minute wait and that is too long, but they have a single rider, which I'm hoping is open. Or I wanted to do Kilimanjaro Safaris, which has a 55 zero minute wait, but I could get a lightning lane for right now. Or I can go ahead and start booking at Magic Kingdom and hope those drop by the time I get there. And that's what we're gonna do. That might be a terrible idea because you can't modify from park to park. So if I book something at Magic Kingdom and then it, um, I want to change my mind to go to Animal Kingdom, I might have to restart it, but we're gonna risk it because I know that um, Kilimanjaro Safaris usually has lightning lanes close to the time you're actually booking. So we're gonna try that. I'm gonna go ahead and book Peter Pan. It's much later in the day than I want, but I want to lock that one in because it's very popular and then we're gonna fiddle faddle. All right, y'all, let's, here's the fiddle faddle in action. I'm gonna go to my lightning lane, click these three dots. You can also access this from the tip board. Hit modify plan. Get out of here, Wi-Fi, I don't want you. And so then you're just gonna pull down and refresh this and hope that another time shows up right there. I'm aiming to get to Magic Kingdom around 5.30. So any, oh, five o'clock, oh my gosh, no way. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Let's hope I don't get got. Perfect. Bang. That's what I love it. Love it, love it. The times are here to stay. We'll get away and have the perfect picnic. Nope, we're off to the park. See you all later.
That ride has so many cute details. I'm still noticing them years later, having ridden it many, many times. Like today, for the first time, I noticed the sun singing along. He's crushing the bass as Mickey and Minnie are driving through the park. I love that. All right, that is an end to our time here at Hollywood Studios. Two more parks to do. We are halfway through our list of 10 banger attractions, and we are off to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Jumbo friends made it to park number three, Disney's Animal Kingdom, my favorite. Got two rides on the list today. Again, I'm gonna try and do Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain, TM, and Kilimanjaro Safaris. This will be the first park I'm not gonna use any Genie Plus at. That's because of all of the parks, I think you need Genie Plus the least in this park. If anything, I would recommend booking Flight of Passage, which is a fancy ride, but you don't really need it for the rest of the rides, especially if you get here early or come in the evening time. I've done both a morning and an evening video here in Animal Kingdom to show what it can be like, and I didn't use Genie Plus on either. I'm still working on the mornings for the other parks, but you can check that out. I especially think Animal Kingdom in the evening is really underrated because a lot of people tend to come here early in the morning because it's the park that's open the earliest and closes the earliest. So if you can come within the last few hours of the park being open, it's usually not very busy. Take today. Safaris has already dropped down to a 15 minute wait. So I'm glad I booked that lightning lane over at Magic Kingdom instead of here. That said, because of that very excellent fiddle faddling and getting Peter Pan's flight at five, I have like an hour or less to do the two rides and get out of here. Which reminds me, most people if they're park hopping are not gonna do four parks in one day. That's a lot for most guests to pop into a park, do one or two things and then leave and go to another one. So if you've done a four park challenge, I salute you. I do feel like it's kind of a Disney ride of passage to do it at least once if you're a more seasoned guest, but mostly this is just a fun way to show off park hopping and provide some tips and tricks on how to use Genie and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, update. Expedition Everest has a 70 minute queue and they just closed the single rider line because it's as long as the standby queue, said the cast member. Everest had a huge downtime earlier today. And so now everybody's trying to ride it and redeem their lightning lanes and all the things. In fact, behind the scenes, I actually was gonna start this video here. I came and parked my car here and then saw Everest was down and that they weren't distributing any more lightning lanes, which is a bad sign when an attraction in the morning isn't distributing any more lightning lanes because it's down. Because that could mean they're not coming back up and they don't want to give out too many lightning lanes. So then I started later than I want to at Epcot and chaos, chaos, chaos. So now, I'm headed to Safaris because only is a 15 minute wait. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for my other attraction here. Or do I add one at Magic Kingdom? Hmm. All right, friends, decisions are being made. I just saw that some lightning lanes came back for Everest. And uh, the problem with this park is there's not a ton of rides that I would call like super popular or the best rides, except for Everest, Safaris, Flight of Passage, which is a fancy ride, 80 minute wait. So. I'm gonna cancel Peter Pan's flight because unfortunately you can't modify within parks. Oh, it hurts, it hurts. Wait, wait, no, I don't have to do this. Because of the 120 minute rule, I can book another one at five o'clock, which is in, at this point, like a little more than 30 minutes. Now I wanted to be leaving this park by five because I have from five to six to ride Peter Pan's flight. But I'm gonna see if I go on safari, which is like, by the time I'm done, probably will be 30 minutes. I'm gonna see if I can book Everest for right now, or like right then, and ride Everest really quick, and then still make it to Magic Kingdom. This is a ridiculous plan. But at least, you know what, if I have to cancel Peter Pan or Fiddle Faddle for a new time, I can do that having done Everest and not cancel it and not lost out on that time I racked up while waiting for Peter Pan. Okay, that was almost terrible. 15 minute wait, that's what we like to see. All right, headed into Safari, 15 minute wait. I'm telling you at the end of the afternoon, this is a great time to come to Animal Kingdom. Now know that Kilimanjaro Safaris does close earlier than the park most of the time, like today it closes an hour before the park. So keep that in mind. I do love an afternoon safari later in the day, especially cause it's just rained and it's a little bit cooler. I'm hoping we'll get some good animal activity. 
I was sadly informed that the hyenas are not out, but I still hope that I see some lions, maybe an elephant, a baby zebra. Kilimanjaro Safaris is the 25-ish minute flagship attraction of this park where you're gonna get in a safari truck and go out on the wildlife reserve and see real giraffes and elephants, and zebras and lions. And I often recommend either doing the first safari in the morning as early as you can, or as late as possible because in the heat of the day, in the middle of the day, you're not gonna see as many animals because they usually go off stage into their air conditioned areas. So early safari, late safari, usually your best chance to see the most wildlife. He's a real animal, so I'm also a real person. Brown eyes, well females have a yellow eyes. Only 3,000 pounds. Cool thing, you should go over, take those nice naps. It's 16 to 20 feet long. My 500, 26, because they work together so effectively as a pack. Actually, one of the highest success rates are in. And this is a whole group of giraffes, and we do call a group of giraffes a tower. This is Nutrient Protein Cop Beta Carotene. We're running at that high speed. About 16 to 20 hours a day sleeping. They'll do all the hunting at night. What an amazing safari, y'all. The lion was chatty. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. He was like, not roaring, cause that'd be really loud, but he was like talking. It was awesome. Wow, love a safari, love a safari. And now we're headed back to Everest, which doesn't have any more lighting lanes, but I can start to look in like two minutes. And so I'm gonna kind of walk that way, cause also maybe the single rider lines open now. We shall see. Back at Everest, no lightning lanes. I went ahead and booked Dinosaur, which is a 35 minute wait. And it says single rider, not available, still a 70 minute wait. So that's not gonna work out. All right, I've made a decision. I'm gonna cancel the Dinosaur Lightning Lane and book something else at Magic Kingdom. Doing this for a few reasons. Number one, that Peter Pan Lightning Lane is from five to six and it's currently 510. So we're cutting it really close as is. And they may let me in a little bit late. Usually customers will give you a little bit of a grace period on the back end. Like I'm talking 10, 15 minutes, not hours. But Peter Pan's Light is incredibly popular. So I'm not trying to push my luck. And also that's a really good lightning lane at Peter Pan's Flight and I don't wanna to have to work to get another one that good. Number two, as much as I love dinosaur, the point of this video is to do 10 of the most popular, generally speaking, attractions at Walt Disney World. And I don't know if I can qualify dinosaur in that category as much as I personally would like to. Here's what we're gonna look at for Magic Kingdom. I was planning on doing Haunted Mansion, Pirates, and Peter Pan's flight, but I'm gonna add another one. Haunted Mansion 835, Jungle Cruise 955, I would qualify Jungle in a uh, very popular ride category. Let's see, where's Pirates 740, and then maybe Space 815? What I think will run out m fast. Uh, I think I'm gonna try and do Mansion, Pirates, and Space. So let's see if I can get Mansion. 835, then we'll fiddle faddle. All right, well, it kept airing out when I'm trying to save my favorites, but they're actually pinned right here. There's jungle, there's pirates, there's space. So it's a liar. Um, <laughs> sometimes this app is very frustrating. I try to, you know, just refresh it or close it out. And okay, wait, which bus stop are we going to? Magic Kingdom number three, gotta go this way. All right, so now I've got Haunted Mansion booked at 830. I've got my top ones up here and I'm just gonna fiddle faddle it uh, as I'm walking to the bus stop or on the bus if needed and see if I can get something closer to like 6, 6.30. I will take any of those attractions to start. Fiddle faddle and we'll have to wait because the Magic Kingdom bus is here and I have 35 minutes to get on Peter Pan's flight. So, walking so quick. We're walking so quick. We don't run in Walt Disney World, but we do walk so quick. Oh, there's a whole line of people, which means they actually haven't started boarding yet. This was kind of dramatic. made it into a stunning Magic Kingdom and the weather has been all over the place today, but right now it is fantastic. I'm in jeans, I'm not sweating, it's not raining anymore. Sun is setting, it looks beautiful. I have about 10 minutes to get to Peter Pan's flight and then I was able to successfully fiddle faddle for a soon, I think 6.05 Space Mountain. So we're gonna do, we're gonna go to Neverland, then we're gonna go to Spas, and then after Spas, I'll see you about Mansion and Pirates. 
If you're park hopping and also using Genie Plus Magic Kingdom is a really good park to hop into because they have a ton of attractions that are super popular and get long lines, but there's so many of them that they don't tend to run out the way that attractions at like Hollywood Studios do. As opposed to somewhere like Hollywood Studios that by mid-afternoon you usually have some combination of Slinky Dog Dash, Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, maybe Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, maybe Smuggler's Run, all out of lightning lanes for the rest of the day. Same thing over at Epcot. Usually by mid-afternoon you're done with Test Track, Frozen Ever After, and Remy's Ride to Adventure. And while those attractions may come back with a little fiddle faddling, it's a little bit easier at Magic Kingdom because walking into the park tonight, even close to six o'clock, I could have still booked Peter Pan's flight. I could have still booked Jungle Cruise, Space, Mansion, Pirates. Even though they're a little bit further out, they're still there. So while stacking at Magic Kingdom is great if you're starting somewhere that maybe you don't need Genie Plus, like Animal Kingdom, if you did start somewhere else where you need Genie Plus, like Epcot or Hollywood Studios, hopping over here, you probably will still be able to book a fair amount of things. There's also a lot of really good filler attractions at Magic Kingdom, so if you do come in and can't book stuff close together or you don't want to fiddle faddle for too long, you could book something an hour or so out, like I was seeing lots of stuff in an hour and a half, and then you get to do those filler rides like some of the shows in Chain of Tiki Room, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Country Bear Jamboree, Carousel of Progress, and rides like the Barnstormer, Under the Sea Journey, The Little Mermaid, Maybe Be a Character, etc. Thank you. Scanned into Peter Pan's flight. This is an almost opening day ride where you are gonna jump aboard a flying pirate ship and sail off to Neverland with Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, and the Darlings. It's a very short attraction, but it's been a fan favorite since it opened in 1971, and it usually has one of the longest lines in the park, usually well over 70, 80, 90 plus minutes, so it is an amazing use of a lightning lane. Pan's flight, check, and now we are off to Tomorrowland for Spa some Mountain. I just love Magic Kingdom in the evening. It has such a special extra little charm to it with the lights. I love, especially right here at Mad Tea Party, the lanterns in the trees. I think this park is better in the evening time. Personally, I did do a whole series, I know I mentioned it earlier, in regards to like stacking lightning lanes and what it's like to come to the park in the evenings. But if you haven't watched it yet, the Magic Kingdom one is extra special because of an insanely wonderful magic moment. But I just love coming to the parks at night. So if you're a night person, then like I am, definitely check that series out because it'll give you the best tips and tricks to take advantage of coming in the park later in the day and still getting a lot done. Also with the night series being complete and the rope drop series being in progress, they can kind of help you park hop because you can kind of put two of them together. So like you want to go to Epcot in the morning and Magic Kingdom at night, well watch the Epcot rope drop one when I make it and then watch the Magic Kingdom at night one and it kind of be a create your own adventure tale. Sposs Mountain has a 44, 44 inch high requirement and is one of my favorite attractions in the park. Gives me a lot of nostalgia. It is a zoom in roller coaster rocket adventure in the dark and very popular. It's got a 60 minute wait right now. So glad we were able to snag that lightning lane. Very good use of a lightning lane here at Space Mountain. Hello. All right, a couple things. Number one, there is no videoing on Sposs Mountain. So whenever you see footage of this, it's from before that rule existed. We do not break the rules here at Mammoth Club. Cool kids follow the rules. Number two, I just asked the cast member if there was another touch point up ahead. Many attractions have two touch points to help prevent people from line jumping. But as soon as I touch in at the touch point up ahead, I'm all caught up with lighting lanes. There's no more stacking or anything for me today. And I'll be able to book my next lighting lane, which means I'm gonna be looking at Haunted Mansion or Pirates and see which one has the better options. And three, this music in the queue is so nostalgic. Anyone else? Secret single rider line. At the second touch point, if you're a single rider, let the cast member know and they'll route you around all of these people and you get on faster because you can fill in some spots. It's really loud in here, so I don't know if you can hear me, but while I wait, I'm gonna go ahead and book something else. Let's see, Haunted Mansion 920, Hot
Pirates at 825. Let's go for Mansion and see if we can fiddle faddle it. Always LOL. It is such a nostalgic attraction for me. The fact that it goes under 30 miles an hour is mind boggling because it really feels faster than that. And you just get flipped around and whipped around. It's still like kind of like a chiropractic adjustment, but who doesn't love that? Not as bad as the Matterhorn, I will say. Okay, now I was able to, I booked Haunted Mansion right before I got on, and then when I was getting off and walking through the exit, I fiddle faddled and I was able to secure Pirates of the Caribbean in about 40 minutes, which Again, if you're a normal person, that's perfect. You could get walk slowly over there, get a snack, see a show, do something else. I am gonna walk slowly over there and keep fiddle faddling to see if I can get something closer, but we'll see. If not, I will enjoy night in Magic Kingdom for a little extra. Update, Haunted Mansion dropped to a 30 minute standby wait. It was like 60, so I'm gonna walk that way. And if that holds true, I'll just do standby Haunted Mansion. And then by the time I'm done, it'll be time for Pirates. We will take a 30 minute wait on Haunted Mansion. Absolutely. Haunted Mansion, I would wager the most popular ride in Disney lore. Definitely the biggest cult following. Opening day attraction puts you inside the Haunted Mansion and the famous Doom Buggies. No hire requirement, anyone can ride it. Full of imagineering genius, largely thanks to Yale Gracie, who is the special effects master. I love this attraction so much. It's amazing. Also, they recently, within the last couple months, added the Hatbox Ghost, who was over in Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. He finally materialized here. Very excited to see him. I have toyed and contemplated a Haunted Mansion Secrets video, just Haunted Mansion. I, Haunted Mansion was in the one I did at Magic Kingdom, the first one, but I wonder if maybe people would like a full Haunted Mansion, only Haunted Mansion fun facts and details. I've been waiting for Hatbox Ghost to come and then for the holiday crowds to die a little bit. But if you would watch that, let me know. And consider this dismaying observation. Sensitive. was an excellent visit to the mansion. In fact, I think it was only like 20 minutes, not even a full 30 to the uh, stretch room. And that really is the best way to use Genie Plus. I say it all the time that the best way to function in these parks is to do a mix of fancy rides, lightning lanes, and standby. No point in looking for a Genie Plus lightning lane for Haunted Mansion when it's a 30 minute wait. You know what I mean? Save that lightning lane for another attraction that probably has a longer one, like right now, Pirates or Space Mountain, or if it's open, probably Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, Jungle Cruise. So being flexible, keeping an eye on the tip board, the modify function, those will be very helpful because even if I had Haunted Mansion and it dropped to 30 minutes, well, that's when you modify it to Pirates or something else anyway. So that again, you're using the lightning lanes where you most need them, where you're gonna save the most time and taking advantage of standby the other times. But speaking of Pirates, we're headed there now. Ride number 10 on this glorious day. My favorite ride in Walt Disney World. 
I didn't even plan that, but what a great way to end. Pirates of the Caribbean, an icon, a classic, in fact, so popular that when Walt Disney World opened without a Pirates of the Caribbean in 1971, because the Imagineers thought we're in Florida, we're too close to other pirate things and actual pirates, uh, they didn't think anyone would want Pirates of the Caribbean here. Guests demanded it because they'd seen it at Disneyland, they'd seen it on TV with Walt, and they were like, where is Pirates of the Caribbean? Give it to us, and the Imagineers did just that in 1973. This is the last attraction that Walt Disney himself worked on, Walt well, the Disneyland version, and to me, it's a perfect attraction. It's everything you want in a Disney attraction. It's a family ride so everybody can enjoy it. It's a classic boat ride. You've got original music, classic Imagineering, but it's still thrilling. It is simply the best and a perfect way to end this absolutely lovely day. It simply does not get any better than that. Except for the Disneyland version. But you know what I mean. I know it's dark and this angle is giving Ursula coming out of the sea. But I have to tell y'all, this family just walked by and they're like, do you want to do the tiki room? And somebody said, what is it? And, and then somebody else in the family goes, it's some weird, dumb uh, bird thing. Listen, listen, listen here. I know that the Enchanted Tiki Room is not everybody's cup of tea, nor everybody's favorite attraction. But it is the birthplace of audio animatronics. 1963 in Disneyland gave us our first animatronics. We do not have the Shaman of Song. We do not have the Stuntronic Spider-Man without these guys right here. So you don't have to go see it, but put some respect on its name. Well, friends, we did it. 10 of the most popular e-ticket best attractions in Walt Disney World across all four parks. Thank you to the new Park Hopper rule for making this much easier than it would have been a few weeks ago. And now that the rule has changed, now that you can park hop whenever your heart desires, as long as you have the right ticket, that not only opens things up for you as a guest, but it opens things up for a lot more fun content. I'm thinking about doing like a series where I do every ride in every park individually and then seeing how, if I can do them all in one day. Uh, that will take some strategy, maybe thinking all of the thrill rides across all four parks in one day. Let me know what other ideas you have. Love a fun challenge. And I think not having park hopping restrictions really opens that up. I hope this was fun for you to follow along and get some park hopping, especially park hopping with Genie plus tips and tricks. Remember, stacking lightning lanes is better for those later parks if you're starting somewhere like Animal Kingdom or maybe even Epcot where you don't necessarily need Genie plus. Fiddle faddling refresh, keeping that modify screen open. Don't book lightning lanes early in the morning. Know when you're gonna lock in those fancy rides. And most importantly, don't forget, mix in standby with those lightning lanes, with those Genie Plus attractions, and with those fancy rides. Also mix in your filler attractions, use Disney transportation. Hopefully this was helpful. I know I had a ton of fun today. Again, let us know what other kind of challenges you wanna see. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with the Man Fame Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been so magical. Good night.